Okay, so talking about God's sovereignty, discussing on this for several, several, several shows. We're going to switch gears today, and we're going to go into a book that I love, the book of Ephesians. Yes, Ephesians 1, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that ye may know what is the hope of his calling, and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to usward who believe according to the working of his mighty power which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand and in the heavenly places far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named not only in this world but also in that which is to come, and hath put all things under his feet, and gave him to be the head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. So, what does all that talk about? I don't know how somebody can read this, and get that we're supposed to be a sick, pitiful church. We are in Christ. We are seated in heavenly places with him, which means that the eyes of your understanding be in line, that you may know what is the expectation of his calling, what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints How can we read this and not walk in the power and authority of Christ in our daily lives? I'm trying to beat this home to you so that we stop being and calling and, oh, that doesn't apply for now. Yes, it does. Christ is already the head of the Ecclesiastia, which means more than what we take the church name to be. The Ecclesiastia, that's all of us, that's the body of Christ. And so, outside the four walls in our daily lives, what is the expectation of his calling in the body of Christ? His expectation is one, living a sanctified lifestyle like Christ walked, Two, walking in the power of the living God like Christ did. Christ is our ultimate example. And then we've got Paul. Paul raised from the dead often. Paul whipped. Paul stoned. No one could have survived that stuff. That is where God's empowerment is sufficient for thee not in the weakness that we think we have. How can you separate the spiritual from the physical world? And as we were talking about a couple shows ago, the spiritual, the physical world is, by the very nature, since the physical world was created by the spiritual world, there is no separating them. What happens on earth, the spiritual world is included. As long as we include it by believing, the spiritual truths are greater than the physical realities. They are stronger. The actual transparent world is the physical world. That's the world that we should be seeing as transparent, not the spiritual world. The spiritual world is more real than what you're standing on now. That's what we need to get a vision for 
That's what we need to understand. We haven't even scratched the surface on living a sanctified lifestyle or on walking in the miracles and healings for all people and being a healthy body of Christ. See, this is such an unusual thought for many people. Now, because y'all are tuning in on the 1412 Radio Network, I think a lot of you have a good understanding. But we still have a long way to go, a long way to bring it into our normal, everyday lives. There's numbers of power verses, that's what I call them, in here, according to the working of His mighty power. How does His mighty power work? Through us. We're His hands. We're His feet. We're His legs. His arms. When we're working together, that's how, according to His mighty power. That is how His mighty power is released through us to everyone. Now, when we only start believing that, He raised Him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places, whereas Paul tells us that we are seated with Christ in heavenly places, so you cannot deny in Christ we are set above all. What's it say here? Far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named not only in this world, but also that which is to come. And he hath put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church, which is his body. So please tell me, you are not given all spiritual authority. You can't. So when I walk up to somebody and say, be healed, that's already done. Because I am seated in Christ in heavenly places. And we don't even have to get... We just need to know we are seated with Him in Christ. We are His body. We are seated high in the heavenly places. There is nothing that can stand when we believe that. And then we want to get... what well, it's really a false form of humility. Well... I'm just a vessel. Well, we're right. We are vessels. Yes, we carry God's Holy Spirit within us, the full Godhead. That means the Father and the Son. We have the mind of Christ. There's a difference between false hum humility and real humility, real meekness. Meekness is strength. We don't see it like that. Humility is strength. I know who I'm seated in. And so I can walk up to a person and say, Cancer, leave. Be healed. Gone. Boom. Out of here. When I believe. When I believe there's nothing impossible, there is nothing impossible at all. We're barely scratching the surface here. Now we've got movers and shakers in the body of Christ. We have got so many people stepping up. They're coming to understand our real power and authority in Christ that are not worried about false humility that give all the glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. We've got to take it further. we got to get it to where all believers start understanding this. Yes, we are called according to our calling. We need to get a firm grasp upon this, folks. And when we do, you watch the world change. When we're no longer walking in false humility that puts down who we are in Christ, even though we have got plenty of scriptures backing this up, and, and yet we still have men and women who call themselves part of the body of Christ that deny healing for today, that put it off, well, we don't know his will. Yes, we do. It's right there. Well, Brother Tony, we don't know the will of God. Well, yeah, we do. Yes, we do. That is, his body is 
happy, healthy, prosperous. Amen? And that's what I'm talking about. And each and every one of you, that's what we want. We don't have to place ourselves on a pedestal that we don't belong on, but we don't have to put ourselves down either. In Christ, we have all these things that are given to us, and so do you. Let me get an amen to that. We are fully within our power and authority to see ourselves divinely healthy and to see other people get there and to walk up to that cashier at Walmart. Oh, your back's hurting you? In Jesus' name, be healed. And then watch her jump up and down and say, Hey, hey, you and the walker, Tony will pray for you. Nothing wrong with that. Come on, folks. And this happens more and more and all the time. And there are so many people grabbing a hold of this. Now it's your turn. And that's my prayer for you. My prayer for you is the same thing that Paul's prayer. Because that really is a prayer. Make a mention of you in my prayers. What does he say? That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. We have the eyes of your understanding being enlightened as to what a huge gift we've been given, the Holy Spirit. Amen. So you can walk up to a paraplegic and say, be healed, and they're healed. Amen. That's what's what taking Christ in your daily job. And you hear a co-worker say, I don't feel good. Well, in Jesus' name, stomach, be healed, made whole right now. Thank you, Jesus. This is what I'm talking about. Woo, I'm excited today. So, to wind this up, go to Ephesians. Read that. See what's really saying. What's really saying is, wake up, folks. We have all all the power of authority. Christ is the head. We are everything else. And in him, which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. We should be filled to the rim. So it's overflowing out of the abundance of our hearts. And we're no longer in fear. We are bold and we are willing to go out into our everyday lives, and when we're pumping gas, we can say, be healed. How do you feel? Be healed. How do you feel? That's what this walk's all about, folks, bringing others into the kingdom of light when we are scratching the surface and starting to make dents in this thing. So, we went somewhere today that, in Jesus' name, you get into your heart. While I'm in the checkout line at Walmart, at McDonald's, wherever, and I overhear somebody saying they got this or that, and they're having to take this medication, that medication, and all that other stuff, and I'm saying, no, in Jesus' name, you are pain-free. The cancer's gone now. And I'll be looking for your testimony. (laughs) Thank you, Jesus. Be blessed. Be healed and be a blessing, and somebody's back just got healed. Thank you, Jesus.